ELISA is the ELISA which is performed for antigen detection. Now, how this direct ELISA works? So, students you can see this is the a single micro titer well. This is a single micro titer well of ELISA plate. ELISA plate is made up of how many wells? 96 wells. So, this picture is depicting the single well, a well of a micro titer plate, well of a micro titer plate. So, what reactions occur in step by step in a direct ELISA? We will see now. So, first step there is a micro titer plate well is empty here. So, in the direct ELISA, there is nothing being adsorbed onto the well of solid phase of micro titer well. So, later in the next step, that is the first step is addition of patient serum. So, patient serum has, suppose for example, patient serum has antigen here. So, antigen will go and gets adsorbed onto the solid phase of micro titer well. And in the next step, wash. So, whatever excess of antigen which is not been adsorbed onto the solid phase that gets washed away in the step of wash. So, next step, so here primary antibody is conjugated with the enzyme. So, enzyme labeled primary antibody, you can see here, this is an enzyme molecule. Enzyme labeled primary antibody is added into the reaction well. So, this is the next step and after this again the wash step is followed. So, whichever anti primary antibody which is not been bound to antigen present in the test serum, so that gets washed away here. And in the next step, substrate chromogen system is added. So, this is the final step. Substrate chromogen system is added and at the end there is development of color. So, the, there is activation of the substrate chromogen system that leads to development of color. So, students you remember here in ELISA, the end point is, end point is development of the color and here color is there means it is the reaction is positive or the ELISA is reactive. Only if the antigen was present in the patient serum, antigen will bind to enzyme labeled primary antibody forming an antigen antibody complex that activates the enzyme and enzyme will act on the substrate chromogen system and finally produces the color. So, this is about the principle and procedure of direct ELISA. Now, we will see the next modification, next type that is indirect ELISA. Indirect ELISA can be used for antigen detection as well as for antibody detection. Today, we will see here how indirect ELISA is used for a antibody detection. So, students see here, this is a micro titer well and this is a solid phase of micro titer well. So, the first reaction, the solid phase of micro titer well is here in the indirect ELISA, it is pre-coated with the, you can see here, it is pre-coated with the antigen. Because we are doing antibody detection here, students you remember already the pre-coated antigens are coated onto the solid phase of micro titer well. So, what is the next step? The next step is you will add the patient serum. So, this is the next step, you will add the patient serum. So, suppose example if the patient serum has antibody, so here the antibody which is present in the patient serum or the test serum, it is called as primary antibody. So, if primary antibody is present in the patient serum, that will specifically bind it to the antigen which was pre-coated, specific antigen which is pre-coated to micro titer well forming an antigen antibody complex. And what is the next step? Next step is a wash step where the unbound antigen antibody if they are there, they are washed away here. So, after the wash step, the next step, the next step here is addition of secondary antibody which is labeled with the enzyme. So, you can see in the pictorial representation here. So, after addition of patient test serum, we will add the secondary antibody which is labeled to the enzyme. So, this is a, this is a step will the enzyme labeled secondary antibody is the nothing other than what is secondary antibody students? Secondary antibody is a anti-human immunoglobulin. So, that will specifically bind to FC region of any human immunoglobulin. So, this secondary antibody will go and bind with the secondary antibody will go and bind with the FC region of the primary antibody which was present in the patient test serum. So, initially there is antigen antibody reaction and this antibody which was there in the patient serum, it gets bind to the secondary antibody which is anti-human immunoglobulin. So, antibody linked to enzyme. So, this is a reaction which is taking place. If this reaction is taken place in the next step, 
when we are after washing in the next step when we are adding the substrate chromogen system so there is development of color so students the end result in the elisa is a, is a observation of development of color yellow color so students you remember here only if antigen the antigen which is pre coated to the well if it combines with the antibody if it was present in the patient serum forming a antigen antibody complex that in turns will bind to enzyme labeled secondary antibody so that enzyme gets activated which upon will act on the substrate chromogen system and finally producing the color so the whole reaction it is a chain of reaction it takes place only if there is presence of antibody in the patient serum so indirect elisa is used for antibody detection